My name's Jim Saban. And I'm Penny Saban. Uh, we're husband and wife. We live in Paso Robles, California, and this is where we built our uh, home railroad. Well, I guess I got started in trains when I was tiny. My father used to take me out to watch trains, and my first train set was a Lionel train under the Christmas tree, like so many guys, when I was uh, five years old. But I always had this need to have a live steam engine. Uh, and I think that stems, again, like a lot of people, that stems from the Donald Duck cartoon with Chip and Dale, you know. Out of scale. Out of scale, exactly. That's the name of the, name of the thing. I kind of figured out how to do it. All I had were some live steam magazines and Joe Nelson's So You Want to Build a Live Steam Locomotive to work from. So I just kind of had to learn it as I went along. I've always kind of done it my own way and somehow or other, over a 17 year period, built the locomotive and it actually ran, so. <laughs> January of 74 is when I bought the first steel to make the frame. Finally fired it up the first time in uh, June, I think, of 1991. So it was, a, it was a long haul building. It's not like I worked on it full time, you know. Raising kids and doing all of that stuff, swim team and baseball and all of that sort of stuff. And money was always, uh, always an object. You know, I'd save up to buy parts, but I made a lot of it myself. And I did have access to a milling machine and a lathe that worked, so I could make train parts at, at work, which I did quite a bit of. But a lot of it was hacksaw and file stuff. I've never had much money to devote to the hobby, but again, it's, it's such an obsession that, that um, you know, you eke out what you can here and there, but it's doable. It's doable on a, on a limited budget. It just, it just takes time. There's some inexpensive, ready to run stuff out there, but I had to have a steam engine. It couldn't, it couldn't be a little battery powered diesel. I had to have a steam engine. And, and so it, again, it took 17 years to do that. Some of it time and, and a lot of it financial. And I saved my pennies to, to buy parts where I needed them. Um, I fabricated a lot of stuff because steel's cheap and castings are expensive. And so I designed something and figure out how to machine it. And, and then- You're still doing that. And I'm still doing that, yeah, yeah. And, and part of that is the challenge of doing it too. It isn't all financial. It's the challenge of figuring out how to do it. There's, right. there's so much stuff now. I don't have the computer skills to design stuff for Shapeways kind of things. I rely on others to do that. But e even at that, sometimes I feel guilty having those not figuring out how to make it myself, you know, and, and uh, I feel like I'm cheating. Yeah, yeah, I guess. The track gauge is four and three quarter which is four and three quarter inches, which is what the one inch scale standard gauge trains run on. My, my train is narrow gauge built to 1.6 inch to the foot. So it's sized to the larger seven and a half inch stuff, but because it's narrow gauge, it runs on the four and three quarter inch track. So for me, it was, it was an ideal situation. It was um, the smaller track, that I could fit around the house, a little bit larger engine, and it satisfied that narrow gauge need for me. The small scale is a lot easier to move around. The equipment, other than the locomotive, I can lift and put on the track myself. I don't need any help doing it. I don't need a lift to 
to move it from one place to another. Just pick it up and go. But it's just a whole lot easier to use at home to me than the larger stuff. And it's just as much fun for me. There aren't a lot of, at the time anyway, there weren't a lot of four and three quarter inch track out there with, at clubs. And what was there in some cases was pretty derelict because people started building bigger and bigger things. So I pretty much always just run at home. We moved here in December of 2003. Um, part of our quest for a house, Penny kept saying, we have to find something where you can put the track down. And I kept saying, yeah, but what we really do is live in the house. I'll find <laughs> some way to do something. If I have to climb a hillside and build a shea, I'll do it, you know, figure something out. And we found this place and it, and it was just right. And I probably started building the railroad or planning it almost immediately. And Penny said, um, put the track in and I'll plant around it. Always supportive of my uh, train addiction. So that's what I did. And took a lot of plotting and measuring and figuring and, and uh, probably like most things I do, I over planned it instead of just starting to lay track. To complete the loop, um, I set up, I have four sections that fit across the driveway that bolt together and uh, they require a little bit of alignment each time, but once they're set, it's, um, then I'm good to go with a, with a complete loop. Well, I had to, of course, worry about clearance. We have three gates we go through, so you got to be careful. Spur included, it's about it's somewhere between 300 and 350 feet. It's not long at all. Real tight curves, they're 21 foot radius curves, which is trouble for most steam engines, but this one, the prototype had blind center drivers, and so consequently, so does this one. Without those blind drivers, it'd never make it around this. And there are spots here where I could open it up a bit, but there are other spots where I'm locked into that, especially across the driveway, I'm locked into that to, to make it on a straight straightaway instead of angling through it. Then it's just a matter of building up steam pressure till the safety valve pops and uh, make sure you pop both safety valves so you know if one fails, the other one's gonna work for you and, uh, and then we're good to go.
Then we go through a, through a gate which leads us to the real scenic part of the railroad where the trash cans and the air conditioning and all of that stuff is. Through another gate, and I think that's one of my favorite spots, going through that last gate and bursting out into the to Penny's beautiful garden again. Um, sometimes I curse some of the plants because my feet catch on them as we go by, but, uh, but she does a good job of keeping things away. I made a little trim board for her so she can lay it on the track and see how far out my feet stick. And she kind of uses it and kind of doesn't, yeah, yeah. It started with a friend that was putting a Trex deck in. And so I acquired all of his scraps and cut it up for ties. And uh, then your brother discovered some, some of his neighbors that were doing the same thing. And so between the two of us, I never did buy a stick of Trex. It was all off cuts from people's deck projects for ties. And I used decomposed granite this time around instead of, uh, instead of gravel. Gives it a little more of a narrow gauge feel and and it's a it's a real solid base that decomposed granite ends up being kind of concrete like once it sets up and no rotted ties anymore so we're we're good there in the past we've had neighborhood kids here and neighbors, grandchildren, and, and so on and so forth. So it, it, uh, it can be an ebb and flow on a, on a given run day. Some days we don't have anybody, other days we have a bunch of kids. And they all enjoy a ride, but for some reason they seem to enjoy running around the yard chasing the train as much as riding it. So that's when, that's when they've got to be careful kicking up rocks and dirt on the track and that sort of thing. But, uh, Kids get away with a lot more here than, uh, than they would at a, a club somewhere. The name of the spur, Lizard Head Pass, which is, um, which is a famous spot on the Rio Grande Southern. It's named for a, a rock outcropping that looks sort of like a lizard. So it's, it's a name I'm familiar with just from reading about it. The first time I backed down the spur and then started up grade, and as I'm coming up grade, I see a lizard that had been cut in half as I backed down the grade, lying across the rail. I just severed him. A couple of friends were here who are railroad guys also, and immediately named it Lizard Head Pass. So I, and the, and the name stuck, but I made a little sign and stuck it out there. Doesn't resemble a real lizard head pass at all, but because of the, the severed lizard, it had to be named Lizard Head Pass. Well, people have said to Penny, is that all he does is go around in circles? Well, when you're playing with fire and water, it doesn't matter whether you're on a big train mountain layout or you're going around in circles, it's still all the same game and it's just a lot of fun doing it. Just thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs>